Hello, welcome to the Elbow Tutorial. This tutorial actually uses an ANSYS Design Modeler Geometry, so we're going to go and open it with a Workbench Reader. You can see here we've got to change this pull down to ANSYS so we can see these, but there's other formats in here as well. We'll select the AGDB file and click Open. That actually brings us to a uh, data entry zone where we can select a number of options in here. The main one is that you turn on name selection processing so that the name selections in Design Modeler end up as parts in ISOM CFD. We apply. So here's our geometry. We'll turn on the uh, surfaces. You can see it's an elbow type part where we have flow that goes this way and then we've got a valve stem or something like that. And, and this could be an intake port or this could be uh, the tap on the side of your house. But it's a very difficult model to sweep and to get a nice pure hex mesh on. So what I'm going to do is expand this parts branch. You can see all the parts. These used to be name selections. And you can right click on these things and do different things like change color. We'll go and we make this like a light orange color. We could also go and set up the mesh sizes. We'll go in here to part mesh setup. We'll set our max size 5, height 1, height ratio 1.2. These are sizes that are in the geometry that can be transferred to the blocking later. Next we go to the blocking tab. Now step 0 in blocking is to create a block. And there's various options, but we're just going to create a 3D bounding box from all the entities. Hit apply. And it creates this single block. It also creates a blocking branch in our tree. And I can go down here and right click on blocks and to make them solid and displayed. You can see I've got one big block. So what I want to do is turn this block into a full blocking that represents this geometry. You can see there's lots of options in here, but don't let that scare you. There's really four main steps we're going to look at. So we're going to start with the split block command. We go up here and there's, there's various commands within split block, but we're going to start with split block. It says select an edge. The instructions are always on the screen. You select it with the left mouse button, the middle mouse button to accept, and now we've split this block. There's another split. So in two quick splits, we now have four blocks. And now we kick into the second level, which is delete blocks that we aren't interested in. So we hit delete block, you select the block you want to remove, and now it's gone. So we did that based on topology. That wasn't part of our topology, our plan. We would, so we want to delete it. Uh, next step would be to associate. That's the third step. And we're going to associate edges to curves. So uh, we don't need to see all these surfaces. It's cluttering my vision and it makes it harder to, to know what's going on. So I'm just going to turn off the surfaces, keep things as minimal as possible. We want to associate edge to curve. We will turn on project vertices though because it makes it a little faster. So we select all our edges for this circle and we select the circle, middle mouse button to accept and they snap together. Uh, we can do it down here as well. One, two, three, four, curve, done. Now the rest of this surface is already associated to the surface underlying. You can right click on edges to see that association uh, but if we snap fit it'll all snap into place. So there, now we're starting to represent our geometry a little better. We could uh, generate a pre-mesh. We'll just turn on our pre-mesh here so you can see it. And you can see that the pre-mesh is already pretty good. It's starting to fit to our geometry. You can see that it's sort of shrink-wrapped onto our model. Got some, some things to be desired because there's missing surfaces and so on, but, but we're on their way. So you'll start to understand that it's just a process of refining how this is projecting to our model. So the next step uh, is, uh, is step number four, which is move vertices. You can see these two are a little bit too close. They kind of cut too close to that valve stem. So we're going to move vertex. I'm going to just drag this kind of this way. When you move a vertex in ISOM, it actually moves on the surface of the geometry. It doesn't move on the plane of the screen. So it's captured that. We've moved it back a little bit. Maybe a little bit further back would be good, uh, just to make sure that we give us enough room to work with. All right, so there's our, our basic blocking. Now we want to do a split. We're back to the split step again. So back to number one. We go up here, we split block. We want to use an O-grid split. Now this is a type of split that we'll drill through here. We can select these blocks, this one and this one. And we want to put faces. You put faces where you want the O-grid to pass through the wall. So face on the top and the bottom. We'll make this like a tube instead of a sphere. So there you go, apply, and we get this sort of ogrid structure. You can see that happen pretty automatically. It'd be a lot of work if you had to subdivide at the geometry level to get that. Plus, it wouldn't be as flexible. So now we want to actually just look at just that inner block. So to keep things cluttered down, we can use index control by right click on blocking. And we'll adjust our O3, so we're just looking at this. So we just did a split command, so what's next probably? You don't always have to be in this order, but let's go with the delete blocks. So we'll delete blocks, and we'll get rid of what's inside here. It's not part of our topology. We delete it. Next step, number three, associate, edge to curve. Again, so uh, these edges go to this bottom curve. These edges, whoop, not that one. If you can always back click, just follow the instructions. They tell you how to back up. There you go, and this circle, and everything snaps into place. 
Now we could uh, do another snap fit, which is like an association type step to move these into place, but I'd rather do the move step where we just align them. So we go over here to align vertices, again it's another type of move, and we select the edges of the direction, and we select the vertex such as the source, and that sort of sets us up with the XC plane and fills out the rest of this table, and we hit apply, and it straightens us out. Uh, we could do a, maybe do a snap fit now, and that snaps that last bit into place. Now I'll look closer and say, oh, this is kind of at an angle here, I don't really like that. I could use the move vertex command and move it into place, but it's a little more precise, a little quicker to uh, do a set location command, another type of move command. So this is my reference vertex, the screen asks me for that. I scroll down, I see I want to modify my Y value based on this, and I want to set these vertices, box select, apply, and that snaps that into place. Okay, so now we've set up this valve, we can say reset, and look at this model as it is now. Uh, let's update our sizes again, and pre-mesh. And so now you can see the mesh is looking pretty good now. We're, we're capturing uh, the basic shape pretty well. Uh, maybe our sizes could use some work, and we could use some smoothing at the end here. But it's gets doing okay. We can see the mesh down at the bottom. Now over here is a bit of a problem. We've got square elements mapped to a circle, and you're going to get bad quality in those corners. We can check the quality using the quality metrics. Determine it 2 by 2 by 2. You could also change the, which quality metric you're looking at. There's, a, there's many of them. We'll go with determine it 2 by 2 by 2 and hit apply. Here's the bad elements. You can take a look at those. I'll turn off the pre mesh so we can see them. And you can see they're wrapping all around. And it's because of this, this corner here that, that we need to fix this problem. We need to have an offset down here. We need an O grid. Well, let's create that O grid and show you how easy this is. We go to split block, O grid. We select the blocks, and we can pick them with the all visible or whatever, but I'm just going to box select them. And uh, we need to select faces, so we pick uh, this face here. Again, this is where we want the O-Grid to pass through the wall. So we pick down here and here. We can pick some of these inner ones because we want it to pass through the valve. Uh, we don't want it to, to stop for the valve. We can pick down there. We can rotate it a little bit and uh, make sure that this is all picked. Middle mouse button to accept. Quick rotate around, make sure that that's good, and then apply. And instantly, we have our O-Grid set up to capture our boundary layer and offset everything for us. So let's take a quick look at this. We'll uh, update the sizes one more time and take another look at the pre-mesh. Okay, so here's what it did for us. It offset that vertex down to there and gave us this edge to work with. Now uh, this is a new dimension, a brand new edge, but we can do all the sorts of controls that we can do anywhere else. We can select this edge and you can say instead of seven nodes I want uh, 12 nodes and instead of spacing one being one, uh, let's set that to 0.1, growth ratio 1.2, and so on, and apply. There's lots of settings in here. Another one we should use is copy parameters to all parallel edges, and uh, let's see how that looks. And now you can see we've got this nice boundary layer growth off the wall. Let's turn off the edges for people who aren't used to ignoring it, so it's not so confusing for you. And we got this nice mesh uh, looking pretty good already. But let's check the quality again, and uh, check our determinant, and apply. And we still have some bad elements, so where are these bad elements? So we, we'll highlight them, and we'll turn off the pre-mesh, and we'll see, oh, they're over here. Okay, let's turn on our edges, and we can take a look and see that that ogre that came in did something kind of bad in this angle here, in this corner. You can see this, this angle isn't very good, so we could move these vertices out. Uh, move vertex again, you know, command number four. And we could say move vertex, and you can grab this, and you can drag it however you want. Uh, but let's just use an actual set location. So we measure and we say, okay, this guy over here is 4. Uh, let's do both of them. And we'll say they are 2. And that pinches those two in like that. That gives me a much better angle to work with. Uh, Going to give me better quality. So let's uh, pre-mesh, recompute. Turn it on. Okay, so now you've got a pre-mesh looking like that. Let's check our quality. Permanent apply. And you can see it's above 0.504. So that's good quality. No solver is going to complain about that. But speaking of solvers, let's send this off to a, an unstructured solver. So we need to right click on pre mesh and we need to convert to an unstructured mesh. And that would be suitable for CFX or Fluent. Let's turn off the blocking. And actually, we could save this blocking as a separate file and we could use it later. And let's take a look at the shells with a solid wire view. Here you can see that there. The mesh is good quality on an individual element basis, but the transitions between elements are sudden, and, and that's not very good. So what we'll want to do is smooth some of that down as well. Okay, so it's done, and you can see here it looks a lot better. All the angles are, are smoother. The 